Hello and welcome to this virtual production vlog. My name is Matt Workman and today we're going to be checking out our camera stage controller. So before we get into that, let's just show what's happening here. You can see that I have an Xbox controller and with it I can fly around like this. But what is happening? What is the point of this type of thing in virtual production, specifically in mixed reality? So the camera you're watching right now, it's being tracked in Unreal Engine and it is shooting me against green screen and we're live compositing this background behind it. And over here, which you can't see yet, we have another virtual camera and it's being tracked as well. But the question becomes, how, what do we do if I want to drastically move positions, right? You've already seen how we do that, but uh, if you're walking around with this camera, you can only go so far until you're out of tracking bounds or it just doesn't make sense to be that far away from like, you know, the main station. So in that case, what we do is we actually move the whole tracking volume together. All the things that are being tracked, which I'm calling camera trackers, I'm calling that the camera stage. We could call it the virtual camera stage, but it's where all the virtual cameras are basically being uh, centered to. Now we can move these around individually, like I can move this around, I can move that around, but there is a origin, a center to both of these cameras, and that is what I'm moving here. So with the left stick on the Xbox controller, I'm able to move its position, and with the right stick, I can spin it around. So we're gonna go get a couple shots, and I'll just demo how this works kind of live right here. So I'm gonna keep backing up. I'm kind of keeping an eye on the camera over there that I can move it and I'm pretty happy with this position. So I'm gonna move this out of the way, uh, but I'll spin it so you can still see it in the BTS camera here, like that, so you can kind of get a better view. Again, we're rotating, we're moving around, and this is what I would call the, again, camera stage, and you'd be the camera stage operator in this case. So I'm gonna run over here. Let's make sure that the BTS camera can see it. I'm gonna start rolling. And so we're rolling now on our virtual camera. This is the primary camera in this case, and our mixed reality cameras are BTS camera, even though it's a much harder thing to pull off than just pure virtual camera. So let's see if this tripod gets stuck again. It is, uh, there we go. Uh, the plate's a little loose, I need to tighten that thing. So many things. Okay, so let's scoot the tripod over here and let's go for a wide shot, okay? I'm gonna go a little lower here. Uh, we're gonna get some pretty cool reflections in the ground there and the water, so I'm gonna just do a uh, kind of handheld pan up, and we've revealed our main character here, who's just dancing in the cave, you know, as one does. Uh, scoot over here, maybe. I don't have any, like, cool foreground. Actually, yeah, I do, there is it. There's the foreground. So let's use this rock here. Gives us a little parallax. So we're gonna do one of these guys. We're going to kind of dolly forward, looking up. And there's our wide shot. I'm gonna do it one more time and then we're gonna scoot the stage forward. If you did have two people with you, uh, one person could just do the scooting of the stage and the other person could just see camera operating. But in this case, this is what I got. But uh, I do wanna show this kind of like virtual filmmaking process in real time. So we have that recorded uh, and we're still rolling. And I'm going to go move the virtual camera stage forward. Yeah, this tripod plate's getting real loose. Real, real loose here. A little sketchy. I'm gonna get a tripod real quick. Uh, screwdriver. Oh, it's right here. Okay, so I'll fix that next time. Boom, Leatherman. Okay, cool. So that was our uh, wide shot. So let's go scoot in and reposition for a closer shot. All right, we're just gonna jump cut right in. This looks like it's gonna work for us pretty well. So again, all in real time, I wanted to show this demo on how fast virtual filmmaking is. And we're not using mocap obviously yet with the actors, but that's the next step. That's what we're gonna be doing pretty soon. But for now, I'm just showing you like a character just standing in place, not talking or anything, but you can kind of imagine. It goes that direction pretty quickly. Okay, so here we are in our close-up shot. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna rock it right here. See, I don't even have to move very much if I don't want to, right? And let's start close, and then we're gonna kind of back out as she comes down, there we go. Pretty cool. I like this lighting, it's very, very backlit, a little flary. Well, not so much flare, but uh, light wrapping around here. It feels very soft. And I actually have a uh, bounce light coming back up at her to make it look like the water is kind of reflecting light. So here's our second shot. And I'll do one with a little bit of movement because why not? All right, so I'm gonna start on this side. And when she does that kind of leaning forward again, I'm gonna wrap around. That was kind of it. 
Again, not the best filmmaking happening today, but uh, kind of just a tech demo. Though it still looks pretty cool. So we can start at the water. I remember just seeing a shot like this that I liked when I was uh, scouting this. Kind of low. It's kind of interesting. Can see the shadow on this rock. There it is. Ah, I messed it up. I'm going to wait for the shadow to come in and then I'm going to pan over. There it is. We kind of find her feet. Then we come up. Doing her thing. And we're walking around like this. Maybe going into a close-up, right? I don't know if I just dropped a frame there. Can't tell. So you can see here that, like, I can't really walk too much further forward. And if I had someone with me, they could give me a little scoot on the stage. But uh, this is working out pretty well. I really like the lighting on her face. Looks kind of... Uh, Kind of natural. She's an interesting character herself as well. Okay, so that's the shot. So we did a wide shot. We did a medium shot with a little bit of movement. And while all the batteries on my system are still working, let's see if we can pull off the, uh, the last shot I was planning for, which is to completely turn around. Okay, that's pretty good. So uh, we've done coverage from this side, so let's go... Let's change sides. We're going to spin around here. Nice. Nice. Uh, you know, so she's going to be front lit from the, uh, from the wall. Let's see how far, what makes sense here. I don't really know. We didn't really pick a side for... I feel like I was on this side uh, for coverage. It doesn't really matter for a scene like this, but I, I try to keep that in mind. I think we're kind of on this side. And we just have a wide shot from over here. I'm not saying the sequence makes any sense, but just trying to do a live demo that kind of shows, like, in the moment how this kind of uh, virtual filmmaking works. So you can kind of look around uh, the set here. If you haven't seen it yet, I haven't. Um, and, yeah, so it's kind of like a cool shot from behind here. Still got a Leatherman in my pocket. Ouch, I'm going to put that here. It's just the screwdriver part, not the knife. Okay, so we can kind of look this kind of like low angle here, like this. I'm just kind of getting some coverage of it uh, for the editor, who is again me. I don't really know exactly what we're going to be editing out of this sequence. But there it is from uh, the other direction. So you can see just how quickly it is to move around and find different shots uh, in a purely virtual environment. It's pretty incredible. I'm not, really, I'm not really feeling anything from this direction, but, you know, uh, just to show that we can turn around, and you can imagine, we'll be showing it later as this gets uh, more, co uh, more complete, that if you're shooting two people talking, you're going to need to spin around to get coverage. So it's the same sort of idea as well. So I'm going to lock this up. I am running out of tripods rapidly as well. So uh, to show it a little bit closer, uh, like this, I have the controls mapped a little bit funny, but in general, the left stick is going to allow you to move like this. So we're gonna scoot in here. We're gonna just go find our new location on set. I'll just leave us off by going deeper into the cave. Uh, again, we're gonna spin with the right stick here. Uh, my joysticks are uh, kind of reversed at this point, but we'll end up kind of where we started. And you'll see that there's a lot of different sets in here. Kind of dark though. It's exposed for looking this way. And so you can just float around in the stage, and I could eventually change how fast you go. We could have bookmarks, all that sort of stuff. And again, the important part for me when I'm designing this at the moment is that it's designed for just me to make content with. Just one person, two people would be cool too. Um, and uh, allows you to move around the virtual space and then operate the camera as needed. It could be on a jib, a gimbal, but in general, it can only move so far. So this is for like much bigger movements. So that is our camera stage controller. So that was a quick look at the camera stage controller. Uh, I am building this framework out uh, into something that I'm temporarily calling virtual production tools for Unreal Engine. And earlier this week, I don't know, this is just fun, I like scooting around, but earlier this week, I was also testing doing some other things with the virtual camera and I actually attached a Unreal Engine light onto the virtual camera here and I built a little mansion scene, used a different Paragon character, and I shot some cool handheld shots with an on-camera light that I could turn off and on with the trigger 
of the controller. So uh, I'll show you a little bit of footage from that as well. I didn't record any live uh, commentary though. So that wraps it up for this vlog. Uh, we checked out the virtual stage controller here, which I'm having a lot of fun with. Uh, we also saw an on-camera light for the virtual camera demo. And again, all of this, I'm putting this into a framework, a lot of blueprints, a lot of programming, some assets, uh, and we're calling it for now Project Virtual Production Tools for Unreal Engine. And eventually I hope to release it for people that don't want to have to do the programming, they just want to get a Vive controller or whatever tracker and be able to do all this kind of stuff, not have to figure out those themselves and I'll be teaching you how it works. It's something that I'm actively working on at the same time, but separately from Cinetracer. So like I always say, if you're interested in following up, you wanna learn more, you wanna to talk to me, you wanna to talk to other people who are doing the same thing, people who are doing LED walls, cause I'm still on a green screen here, uh, please join us on the Facebook group, Unreal Engine Virtual Production. I always have to think about it. It's kind of a, a mouthful of a name. Uh, if you're not on Facebook, you don't have to do Facebook. You can join just for that group alone. That's mostly what I use it for as well. Uh, that is where most of the discussion and a place that you can upload videos, see other people's work. Um, you don't have to do all the other Facebook things. You can just be for virtual production and then go back to whatever it is that you want to do elsewhere. So again, thanks for watching this vlog and I'll see you on the next video.